Breath of Fire came about, it was, con well, it was conceived in November in 2003. I was at, along with a group of other women, I was at a women's luncheon, a Latina women's luncheon in Santa Ana, the Del High Center. And there were all these women speaking about how they got into business or what, why they started what they needed to start. And it, 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 there are very reasons, but really it was out of a need, uh, a financial need or a need to support their family or a, or a purpose that they felt that they needed to pursue. And that really inspired me to think about, about creating a theater company in, in Santa Ana. I had been working with other nonprofits, other organizations, but the idea of forming an all-female, specifically a Latina female, a, th a, <laughs> a Latina theater company, like, was conceived, or the idea began. And as to really getting up on its feet, wasn't really until 2005, 2006, when um, Breath of Fire partnered with El Centro Cultural de Mexico to uh, go after a grant from the California, uh, California Story Fund, California, Cal the California Council of Humanities, specifically a Cor California Story Fund grant to tell the stories. And the project was the Mexican OC, where we collected over 35 plus stories to, um, to tell the stories of Mexican Americans uh, their history here in Orange, or there in Orange County, and it's dated back to the, to the, uh, to the beginning of Orange County to about 2006, 2007. It was a two-year grant, matching grant, and that's when Breath of Fire emerged itself as a production, as a producing company, creating new work and producing new work. So that was really, really exciting. And then from there, it sort of continued to move forward. Um, through uh, partnering with El Centro Cultural de Mexico, we were housed, and then um, we were able to have our own space. They became our neighbors, and, um, and so we continued to thrive, uh, reaching out to Latino artists, theater artists in the community within Orange County, the surrounding communities, and nationally. Um, so that's kind of where Breath of Fire started. It was, a, it was sort of an idea that was sparked and inspired by other women who wanted to find their purpose. And having, uh, and being an actor in, in Southern California, I was struggling with auditioning and with trying to find roles that I felt could better represent a community that I was, that I was a part of. So creating opportunities for other Latinas in the performing arts was really important to me. I, I wanted something for me and for women like me. So and that's how Breath of Fire came to be. What's interesting is the term Latino. As, as you know, it's gone through, um, you know, I think language uh, updates itself and finds its way through um, generations. Currently, we are calling our stories Latinx. Um, and, but, but I know that Breath of Fire still remains a Latina theater ensemble although we do not live in a vacuum. Having these stories through the lens of Latinas, Latinos, Latinx is important. They are universal stories. So regardless of your cultural background or your racial back background, I believe these stories can be relevant to many communities. And for me, it's, what's exciting is to see these stories staged or read uh, for future generations. As a child growing up, I remember trying to find myself in stories. And when I could see myself not really making those conscious connections, it excited me. I saw myself, or I saw my family, I saw the stories that I felt I was a part of. And I think that was really exciting. So being, being able to share that to not only to youth, but adults, families, communities, seeing themselves staged, seeing their story staged is really exciting and is really important and why Breath of Fire has, has also come to be. In 2011, Breath of Fire was in, was in the middle of a crossroads. We had done a beautiful production of Angel of the Desert by Janine Salinas. Um, and we had presented that at South Coast Repertory. And that was incredible to be a part of. It was part of their studio series. And we came back home and we all felt a little tired and exhausted and curious about what else could be out there for us as not only just as a theater company, but as individuals. Um, we are a volunteer based organization and people come and go. Uh, people, we, we are happy to support people and we're happy to see them grow. And that included myself. I was 
I was curious about what else was out there for me and could I survive without my theater company? And I thought, and I felt like a lot of ensemble members may have felt that way as well. I mean, I can't speak to everyone, but, um, and also our, our neighbors, El Centro Cultural de Mexico, they were going through something horrific. They were evicted. And, um, and to lose them in our building was, it felt like we, it, it was an opportunity for us to also leave. Um, so they, they were forced out and we decided to close our doors. And financially it became, it became difficult. I mean, running a theater company, managing a nonprofit, producing work, it, it's not an easy business. Um, and I think it was an opportunity again to, to close our space, but as to whether or not Breath of Fire was officially closing was still, an, there was no period at the end of that, that statement. It was more about like, well, what if we went nomadic? What if we let go of our space? What does that mean to us? How do we then continue to work together? And so we went nomadic. We went on a, like I would say, a, uh, a working hiatus, like in, in quotation marks. Uh, and it was interesting because it, it, I know that other artists went out and did their own thing and find their own way. And me and I, as a, as a, as a theater artist as well, theater professional, I also found my way too. Um, so that was hard. That was hard. But it was also, um, it was a bittersweet moment. Um, but in 2015, it felt right to reemerge ourselves. Um, now, it kind of came through uh, my relationship with Santa Ana. Um, I, again, stepping away from Breath of Fire, seeing how I worked, and, and, and it, were there other opportunities to work with other organizations trying to, to um, support theater in Orange County? And so I had worked with several organizations, Arts OC, which is the Orange County Arts Council, and then I um, began heading a project for South Coast Repertory, the Dialogue Dialogos Project, which was also another large uh, not large project funded by the James Irvine Foundation, and that was a two-year grant. And um, that 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 project was really about working with the Latino community, Latina community, Latinx community of Santa Ana, and to find that story. And that was something that I worked in partnership with Jose Cruz Gonzalez, who's also a phenomenal playwright, who was also responsible for the Hispanic Playwrights Project at South Coast Repertory. Now, I've been a faculty member for South Coast Repertory for most 13 years now. So I had already a relationship with them and they knew my relationship with Santa Ana. They knew my relationship with Breath of Fire. So um, it was really excited to work at that capacity with that kind of budget to re-engage my with my community. And I learned so much more about my community, which was really exciting. And um, so that was a two year project. It was, it, it's to this day still my favorite project. And it like, it's really close to my heart. Um, by engaging with a lot of people and, and hearing their stories, and Jose was so great about sharing what he did, and then I had a team of 10 teaching artists who also shared what they did, and there was a lot of follow-up with community people and, and who had participated, wanting more, like, how do I write my own play? How do I do this? How do I do that? And so I, um, knowing that SCR had shifted their attention elsewhere, um, I decided to look at an opportunity. How do I, um, you know, wanting to still work with my community, really building all these beautiful relationships, um, it was hard to not do something. And so I reached out to a lot of playwrights and theater artists that I'd worked with, and I said, listen, there's a want, there's a need. I don't have a budget. I don't have the budget that I had before, but listen, could you donate some time? and do what you do best, and we're gonna do it for 10 weeks. What can you do? And within that 10 weeks, we did 10 workshops, and we had, I mean, I think a returning group of people between 30 to 45 people. And we had, a, so it became a playwriting, theater-making workshop series. And it was really about sharing how to write your story, it, most, most, first most. And, um, and out of that, there were like 40 stories, 45 stories that came out of that. And that was exciting and renewing and and just wonderful to hear and um, and what was what I also loved about it is because we had no space, we had no money, people donated their spaces to us and and that included the Latino Health Access, um, Alca, 
uh, Frida Kahlo, uh, Frida, the Frida Cinema in Santa Ana, and um, uh, the the Cal, uh, Grand Central Arts Center, and um, and community members like neighbors, like they opened up their backyard and said, "Here, um, why don't you do it in our beautiful backyard?" Um, so, and I even ha hosted one in my backyard, and it was really exciting because we sort of took people who who knew the community, or maybe didn't quite know the community, but would go to these different workshops in these different locations. And sometimes the workshops would be in relation to the space, and we would write a little bit about that, which I thought was also really exciting. Um, and not always, you know, it just really depended on what the, the teaching artist wanted to present. And that was really exciting. I mean, we had, um, again, Jose Cruz Gonzalez, we had Christina Leach, Diana Burbano, Estela Garcia, um, Armando Molina, um, Kimberly Colburn, Bernardo Solano. I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal. And I'm probably forgetting some, but I hope not. Um, but that was like our launch. And they all donated their time, people donated their spaces, and people showed up. And so the idea was, okay, so for those who wrote something, who wants to now do a, a shared reading? And that was hosted at the Frida Cinema. And that was our concluding component to the 10 weeks. And what was unfortunate during that time is one of our founding members, Gina Davidson, had passed away. And um, I grew up with Gina here in Santa Ana. And to have this theater with her was was really beautiful. I mean, um, you know, sharing theater with her was really awesome, really special. I mean, she was my theater sister. And um, to see her go was really, really hard. And it's still, I mean, it's, it still bothers me to this. I mean, it's still, I mean, who wouldn't be affected by that? Um, but we grew up together and we went to CalArts together. And we always would talk about like what we could do. And so, Concluding the uh, concluding the new works are the 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 ten weeks session was was also honoring her pass honoring her because she inspired so many people. She was always one of those quiet people who would have like the best idea in the room, and she was an amazing costume designer. So um, I know that with every time I hear a story, I can't help but think of what would Gina say, you know. So um, so that was also. Um, marking a time, a hard time for Breath of Fire, but also a celebratory time. 2015 is when we did our first series. And um, when, we, when we moved forward and we were looking for spaces, we obtained a residency through Grand Central Arts Center, which is, a, which is part of Cal State Fullerton. Um, and Grand Central Arts Center is, is, a, is, a, is a gallery space, uh, is a resident space for artists um, who are attending Cal State Fullerton, who are also doing work in the community of Santa Ana and Orange County, specifically Santa Ana. And so we were invited to be resident artists at Grand Central Arts Center. So we have a space. So that, that was like, wow, we can continue our work. We don't have to worry about spaces. Although that doesn't mean that we don't do our work outside of our space, because we definitely have, and we continue to do so. But it was it's nice to have a home. It really is. And um, so that alleviates overhead and, and um, in a place where we can, can convert, uh, converse, um, hear our work, write our work. Um, in fact, today is our writer's lab. It's every first Sunday we open up our space and it's sort of like circuit training for writers. And it's not a formal workshop. It's just um, like, hey, if you're interested, if you need a space to write, if you want to share your work, we have Wi-Fi access, come to our space. Um, so that, that's that been really exciting. I had been directing um, a piece called Rosado by Cole Santiago, and that was for the John Lyon New Works Festival at Cal State Los Angeles. Jose Cruz Gonzalez, again, invited me to go work with his, he, um, with his group over there. And so the piece is about a young woman who is having her quince out of, and she doesn't want it, but her family is really persistent. Anyhow, so being involved with this one particular piece reminded me of my community, reminded me of Breath of Fire that she's 15. And how do we, how do we celebrate her? How do we, how do we, and you know, again, 
um, you know, like quinceañeras is about uh, about coming of age, about coming into one's adulthood, about um, letting letting others know that they are here and that they are joining the adulthood and leaving childhood. So, what does that mean to Breath of Fire? Um, what what is she going to what what is she doing at fifteen? How is she going to be seen as an adult? How is she going to move forward? And that's a, that's always a question. But I'm excited to attach and launch her her fifteenth as part of this New Works Festival. So the 15 stories are marking the 15 years of Breath of Fire. And how does a playwright get involved with Breath of Fire? I think it's really about what a playwright wants. And I think that's an important question to ask yourself as a writer. Like, what do you want? What do you need? And those are things that we always ask our playwrights. Um, I think what's really important is to come check out our Writer's Lab the first Sunday of every month, and they're free. I recognize that what we do may not be for everybody. Um, and I know that people are sometimes looking for their plays to be produced. And, and I ask myself, is your play ready to be produced? I mean, what is it that you do you need a stage reading? Um, what is it that you want to do? Do you want feedback? So um, I, I think our place is really about examining your play, what's working, what's not working. Um, what's the fee what what kind of what kind of questions do you have for um, for your audience for your listeners how can we strengthen your play so that's kind of where we're at with breath of fire we do we have partnered with productions and with um, plays getting up on their feet but really we're here for writers who who want to know what else do we need what else do I need to do to strengthen my play as a writer so we have um, sponsors and partners and funders. Um, our funder, our big funder is the California Arts Council. Uh, we received a two-year grant, a Cultural Pathways grant, to help support our programming. So the two years that we've been able to pay our teaching artists has come through the California Arts Council. It's a beautiful grant. It, um, it's a matching grant. It was for $10,000. So we had to also match the money. Um, the money and also like in kind uh, as well. Um, and then prior to that, part of um, some of the funding was the Santa Ana Artist Grant. I was a two year recipient, which also helped sort of uh, set up the programming as well and helped su support me doing the work with Breath of Fire. And then of course, our residency with Grand Central Arts Center allows us to be housed use our space for rehearsals, um, table work with our playwrights, and again, the programming that helps support our writers to write their stories. Um, the California, I'm sorry, Grand Central Arts Center's Cal State Fullerton, which is part of Cal State Fullerton. And of course, um, our ensemble members as well. Um, and then of course, there's Wayward Artists, which is um, new to Grand Central Arts Center. It is a group of uh, Cal State Fullerton's um, alum, theater alum, who have started a theater company. And the Wayward Artists, um, they have been supporting us with the production. So they're providing us the space because they now manage the space at Grand Central Arts Center, the, the theater space. And so they're providing us with rehearsal time, tech time, a tech person, who's also our light person, and then, of course, the space to host our New Works Festival. So we're really, really grateful. And then, of course, there's individual donors who've contributed to help match the grant. Um, and so we're still looking for more individual uh, donors. Like I said, our funding concludes June 30th. And as to um, the 10-week process, that's a question. But our Writer's Lab continues. Our space is still available to for people who want to come and write and share their work. Um, so one of the things that I also want to put out there is hoping that people will want to continue to help support Breath of Fire. Um, with, our, with our New Works Festival launching our Quince, um, we are putting out there that we are asking each person to contribute at least $15. <laughs> so our hope is that maybe by launching a campaign to raise money for the work that we want to continue to do, would also be something to for people to consider. We I don't want to charge people um, only because I think that writing is already 
difficult as it is to make that time. So um, by by setting it aside to pay our teaching artists, I think is is for me um, more beneficial. So uh, putting it out there, like you know, as opposed to paying us fifteen dollars, contribute to our 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 organization and let us let us pay our teaching artists so that you can come to our workshops without without worrying about paying for the workshop. So that's that's our hope. That's our that's our dream. We are on Facebook, Breath of Fire Latina Theater Ensemble. We have our website, breathoffire.org, and we are on Instagram, Breath of Fire Latina Theater.